Good morning. Thank you for joining us today for our Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. If you would please take a moment to silence your cell phone, we would appreciate that. Our devotional hymn this morning is number 716 in the St. Michael Hymnal, number 716. You are invited to join us for the propers and the ordinary of the Mass. The propers are the introit and communion. They're called propers because they are specific to the day, so they change every week. The ordinary are the Mass parts, and they're called ordinary because it's the parts of the Mass that we sing at each Mass. That's why they're called that. And um, today, Father, we use Eucharistic, Eucharistic prayer number four. At the end of Holy Mass, you are certainly welcome to bring your worship aid home with you. But if you are choosing not to, please remove it from the pew and put it in a recycle bin. If you're in the social hall, leave it there on the table, and I will be sure that it gets in the recycle bin. Thank you so much. Number 716.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather this morning at Holy Mass to be a more loving and compassionate people, for God is all merciful. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Oh, no, that's wrong. Excuse me. <clears throat> A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? Because that was in the book. Okay, I'm doing one. Let's start over again. <laughs> a reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbors in justice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. <clears throat> Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember, remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death 
and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me. I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. You Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he paid back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul's letter to the Romans is probably his most developed but complicated letter. It's his most theological and sets him to be the first Christian theologian. And it's been our second reading for the past couple of months. Personally, I always find it both challenging but also rewarding to preach from Paul's letter to the Romans. At some point, it's complicated and dense, but when I get an insight, it really illuminates his message, the gospel that St. Paul preached. And it helps us all to live in the spirit. That was a, a very uh, a popular theme that Paul stressed, to live in the spirit. His overarching message throughout Romans is the righteousness of God. Now, what does that mean? The righteousness of God means God saving justice as revealed in Christ for the salvation of all, Gentile and Jew. Well, today's second read is very short, and it comes at the end of his letter, chapter 14. There are 16 chapters in Paul's letter to the Romans. And though written 2,000 years ago, he says something that is still very much important for us all to hear today. A message that everyone needs to hear. He says, brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. It never occurred to me, but basically, what St. Paul is saying is a summ summation of the whole gospel. That as a Christian, I belong to somebody else. 
I belong to Christ. My actions, my words, my whole life are his. That's what St. Paul preached and that's what he lived. Ever since his conversion after a road to Damascus, he's been given his whole life to the risen Jesus, to Christ the Lord. And he says that in many different ways throughout his letters, I am in Christ and Christ is in me. And here he is saying, I live and die in the Lord Jesus. I mentioned this before that to be a Christian means that you believe Christ lives. And after saying that and living, knowing that, you live by that. That we belong as Christians to somebody else, Christ our Lord. Notice the title Lord is a very encompassing title. He's not just the Lord of a certain people, of a certain region. No, he's Lord of the living and the dead, which means everyone. St. Paul writes, none of us live for oneself. Now, is this what our culture is telling us? Emphatically, I would say in many aspects, our culture is saying to us the exact opposite. We hear from culture, what I mean is entertainment, the news, all the, 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 the aspects of the culture that we live in. What's being celebrated is your own opinion, your own thoughts. Everything evolves around you. What you think is all that matters. What you do is all that matters. I've called this before the unbridled personal freedom. Or as some others would say, many in our culture are living as permanent adolescents. Ever since the summer of 2020, with the COVID lockdowns, with the George Floyd uh, protests and riots, in my opinion, there's been a downward spiral in our culture. And I've noticed what's been kind of surfacing since that time. A control of language, a celebration of mob rules, and a suppression of differing opinions, even those based by facts. There's this thing called a safe space. And it's where people go who don't want to be challenged. They don't want to hear differing opinions because they would say that's a form of violence because it, it causes stress on the individual. Give me a break, people. Our republic is a liberal democracy. It's based upon arguments. It's based upon advancing things and hopefully advancing as a culture and society not upon just retreating into one's own self-opinion. Even when those opinions, different opinions are based on facts, on data. I'm not talking about the protection of hate speech. There's no protection for that, the violence, physical violence against a people or a person. But when language is trying to be controlled and thoughts are trying to be a uh, 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 steered, we're headed in a very dangerous place. It's a danger when we abandon universal truths and absolutes, and we fall into isolated islands of personal opinions and personal truths. The warning signs we can see in our world, that if we go too far with this, Eastern Europe with the Balkans, some parts of Africa with tr fierce tribalism, the Middle East. North America, in many respects, are flirting with such mentalities and actions. And along with this comes the abandonment of church and faith, cutting oneself off from transcendent and spiritual truths 
that has stood for centuries. I was reading an article why the rate of depression is rising in our culture, especially among younger generations. I said, well, it shouldn't really come as a surprise, especially when we cut off faith and the spiritual life. Why the depression? Well, when one cuts oneself off from grace, grace which connects us to the very life of God, that's a danger. When one no longer prays, what is, what is prayer? When we raise our minds and, ha and hearts to our God. Again, notice rising, raising oneself. We no longer live by hope. We cut off a relationship, a relationship with a God who wants a relationship with all of us. And not just any God, but as we heard in today's gospel, a forgiving God. Experiencing that forgiveness is very important. We know how harsh culture can be, how harsh the world can be. But that forgiveness and love of God is so very important for us to experience. And no, it is not something we conjure up ourselves, but something given to us. So it's no wonder why there is a rise in depression. Where is the hope? We live by hope. If I didn't live by the hope of the resurrection, I don't know where I would be. I probably do know. I mean, everything would be about me. And I would surround myself with wealth, power, and pleasure. Not truth, not the spirit but everything that would satisfy my ego. The paradox of the Christian life is that the more we give of our lives to God, the more we become who we are truly called to be. Not determined by culture, which is always changing, but determined by the spirit of truth, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Our identity and personhood is determined by this eternal and loving God. A God who did not seek after a safe space. A God who went to the cross. And that's the difference. And that's the prism we should live and look at life through. The cross. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, let us allow the grace of the Eucharist to give our lives to the one who suffered and died for all of us. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came now from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess, I confess one, one baptism, baptism, the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Every day we pray that God will forgive us our sins as we are prepared to forgive our neighbor. Let us seek the mercy of God. For the reconciling church that brings healing to penitence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peacemakers in our world, that they may help to end violence and discord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cannot forgive, may their hearts be touched by God's Spirit, we pray to the Lord. For a growth in mercy and in holiness through our devotion to the Holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the sick may be delivered from illness, especially Shirley Lilly, Ruth Beard, Susan O'Brien, Ralph Domena, Helen Brugo, Karen Carter, Norm Johnson, Elaine DeRoche, Lucille Carter, Gail Davison, and Brad Owens, we pray to the Lord that the dead, especially our departed brother, Arthur Carter, for whom this Mass is being offered, may be with their Savior in paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of mercy, slow to anger and rich in compassion, grant our petitions. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 620, 620, also on the inside of the worship aid.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that we each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. You are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you may fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. But then we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven, as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image, and trusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the main of death, for he came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, than the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. That we may not live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as a first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of vine, he gave thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save 
Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, they gather to one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer the sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant a merciful Father that we may enter into heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Save his command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is number 613, 613.
Please remain seated. Confessions will be Friday morning at 10, 15 a.m. Next week, we have a second collection for the Peace Retirement and Benefits Fund. Our assessment for our parish is $26,260. Again, these are for the retired priests specifically, only for the Diocese of Charlotte. Walking with Purpose will be holding their open house on September 25th. This is the Catholic Women's Bible Study, open to all women of the parish. See details in the bulletin. Uh, thank you everyone who signed up for our directory coming up. We've extended another day, October 16th, for signups. So if you haven't signed up yet or those dates before didn't work out for you, uh, hopefully October 16th will help. So please sign up website, church Facebook, or in the social hall. Our church picnic is just a week away. Hopefully we'll have better weather next Sunday. A bake sale, cakewalk, um, dunk tank, pin, uh, pinatas, volleyball, balloon animals. I mean, more fun than you can fit in an afternoon. So that's next Sunday uh, after uh, in the uh, afternoon. And... Um, Also, too, if you are head of a group, a prayer group, a ministry here at the church, we would like your group photo in the directory. So please gather your group together, take a picture, and contact Valerie for inclusion into the directory. It's good to have all representations of our, of our, uh, of our parish in the upcoming directory. There'll be a musical performance of Luke chapter 6 at St. Joan of Arc the first week of Lent. Rehearsals begin in October. If you might want to perform in this musical, please see Tiffany for contact information. And also, after our masses, we have a health ministry team that will be offering free blood, blood pressure checks. That will be in the library after mass, and the bookstore is open as well. We also have our new commoners table there in the social hall. So if you're new, you want to know more about the information of this parish, please uh, go to them. They have uh, information and some yummy cookies for you, okay? Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth proclaiming the gospel by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 645, 645. Please remember to take your worship aid from the pew.